You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. In an article written by The Athletic's Michael Walker, Brentford's Director of Recruitment, Lee Dykes, recounted how, during a coaching seminar held at Manchester City's training ground, Pep Guardiola had revealed an interest in rugby, describing how he used the sport as an unlikely reference point with his players. Rugby is brilliant, Guardiola reportedly told an attending coach, who had given himself away by wearing a team shirt. I teach my players rugby. You get the ball, you run towards the man, you draw him in and you pass. So that anecdote was brief, but Guardiola's interest has been corroborated. For instance, after Japan beat South Africa in one of the biggest World Cup shocks in history, their then-coach, Eddie Jones, revealed that he had visited Guardiola during the Catalans' time at Bayern Munich, taking the opportunity to watch the first team train. Rugby and soccer are very similar, in that you always want to move the ball into space, and Bayern Munich and his previous team Barcelona played the most fantastic passing game that you've ever seen. The principles are exactly the same. Well, exactly the same? Well, the sports are historically entwined, but they have some very fundamental differences. And rugby union is football's sworn social enemy, so stories of them cheerfully borrowing from each other are very rare. Nevertheless, the crossover between elite sports are often greater than assumed. One area of interest is in recovery. Guardiola was asked about Jones's visit to Bayern back in 2019, during England's run to that year's World Cup final. He recalled it fondly, but he also revealed that he planned to invite the coach to Manchester City's Etihad complex after the tournament, and was particularly curious as to how rugby teams were able to play so many high-intensity games in such a short space of time. I will ask him how they can regenerate the players like they do after their games. How can they survive? Guardiola said. Highly pertinent, given football's issues with burnout and its increasingly congested calendar. More interesting, though, is the tactical influence. Guardiola cheerfully admits to not really understanding the game's rules, and given how granular they can be, who really blames him? But rugby's use of space is a concept which is easy to understand. So too how its players use the timing and depth of pass, and also their teammates to maximize it. Eddie Jones's Japan were an especially good example. On a player-by-player -player basis, they were clearly inferior to the South African side. They also gave up a significant size and weight advantage too, meaning that like so many Guardiola teams, their main currencies were technical ability and ball movement. And there's no better example than that side's most famous moment, the try that won them that famous game in Brighton. In rugby, the ball can only be passed sideways and backwards, with the ultimate aim of crossing the goal line. And with the last play of the game against South Africa, that is the attacking situation that Japan faced. South Africa had a player in the sin bin at the time, so it was 15 players against 14. Japan were able to further manipulate that advantage, though, by running towards the outside shoulders of their markers, engaging them before releasing a pass, and thus preventing the defence from simply shifting from one side to the other. It's that get the ball, run towards the man, draw him in and pass philosophy that Guardiola referenced at that Manchester City seminar. And it rewarded Japan. South Africa were left with too much space to defend, and the try was scored in the opposite corner from where the move began. The message is obvious. Space has to be found, and opportunities have to be constructed. In rugby, as in football, when the ball is passed matters, as well as where and to whom. That's true when a team is trying to break down a deep defence, when it's attempting to cut through midfield lines, or when it's faced with a high press. Watch the way Ikai Gundogan draws his man before playing a pass, for instance, and notice how often that opponent is taken completely out of the game. Now, that isn't to say that such traits are direct results of Guardiola's admiration for rugby, or have even been influenced by it. Ascribing it too much influence over his coaching would be ludicrous, as it would to pretend that rugby invented the notion of dragging in defenders or utilising space. But that's not really the point. Rugby shows the value of these concepts in a very obvious and relatable way making it believable that Guardiola would occasionally use the sport as a teaching tool, even briefly, just as a change of tone for players who've grown weary of hearing the same concepts described in the same way, like watching a video at the end of a school lesson, perhaps. And that's particularly true given the way that Guardiola wants his teams to play and the defensive tactics those sides often come up against. His teams are often comprised of smaller players, who are dependent on space, positioning and ball rotation, and who often face similar challenges week to week. 
for Manchester City, as it was for Barcelona and Bayern Munich, it's normal to see a defence in a low block. If attackers in that system aren't properly engaged or passes aren't timed or positioned well enough, attacking play can quickly become lateral and ineffective. Given how often Guardiola presumably has to make this point to his players, it's important that he has a few different ways of doing it. But does any of this mean that he's preparing for games by watching Six Nations matches and constructing his game plan around rugby concepts? Well, no, of course not. But Guardiola has long been borrowing from other sports. At Barcelona, he would regularly swap notes with the heads of other departments within the club, basketball for instance and water polo. Johan Cruyff, Guardiola's great mentor, used to regularly have coffee in the Barcelona ice rink with the club's handball coach. So rugby is just another influence. And from the player's perspective, perhaps occasionally offers a different angle and a new perspective on overly familiar ideas that success in their sport, as well as many others, depends on. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.